Hey guys, it's Spiros from The Self-Help Photographer. It's Tuesday and what you're seeing here is the long version of my basic raw processing using Adobe Lightroom. So you probably jumped over here for my other video. Go ahead and install Lightroom, download the files in the description down below so you can follow along and let's get to it. Okay, so here we are at the computer and if you haven't already installed the trial version of Lightroom and you want to follow along, go ahead and pause the video and do that now. I'm going to assume you've got it installed and you've opened the program and when you open the program it asks you to create a catalog. Go ahead and just name the catalog whatever you like. The catalog is the database that Lightroom uses to store all of the information about your photos. So I'm going to open Lightroom and I've set up a temporary catalog to work with that's empty so that you guys can see what it looks like when you first get started. The first thing you need to do is just import your photos into the program and that's super easy. If you don't already see the screen looking like it does with an import button over on the left here, just come up to the top here and click this library that will bring you over to the library module and what you want to do is click import now when you start working with a trial here what I recommend you do is just import a few photos don't try to start by dumping your entire catalog of photos into Lightroom so what we're going to do is just import a couple of photos that we've set aside I've got a folder on my desktop that has two raw files in it these are the raw files that you can download from the link in the description if you want to follow along with me. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get to my desktop, which is going to be right here. And I've got these photos in RAW. And you can see that it finds the photos and it's got them checked and I'm going to import them. When you import, for right now, just use the Add option. What that's going to do is that's going to add the photos to the catalog, but that's going to leave them exactly where they are on the computer. Again, the point of this video is just to get into the software so we can work with it. I'm not really going into how Lightroom works just yet. Once we've got these checked, we're just gonna hit import. So we've got these photos downloaded into Lightroom now, and this is the basic interface. Now, most raw processing software has this sort of basic interface. On your left over here, you have your catalog of photos. In the middle, you have your thumbnails. And then over on the right, you have your tools and adjustments. It might have things flip-flopped. It might have tabs, but generally speaking, this is what raw software is going to look like. To start, I want to work on this first photo of the dandelions. We're going to double-click the photo to get an enlarged view of the image, and then we're going to move up to the top here and click develop. That takes us into what Lightroom calls the develop module. And you'll notice over here on the right hand side, we have this tool palette with all kinds of different sliders. Now the first one we have is white balance. And with white balance, it's nice because you can change things three different ways. The first and easiest option is just to choose from the embedded presets that come with your camera. Auto, daylight, you can see here as I cycle through them that it's changing the white balance of the image. It's changing the color cast. The next option is this eyedropper. And the eyedropper is pretty slick because it allows you to go into your photo. And as you can see, this little inspector comes up and it tells you pick a target neutral. A target neutral color is white, gray, or black. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click over here in the sky, which is a neutral white, and it's going to change the color cast of the image, and it's gonna make the dandelion fluff look white, it's gonna make the sky look white, it's gonna have a little bit of warmth left here, but generally speaking, it's adjusted the colors. Now, I'm gonna go back to as shot because I wanna show you the third option you have. The third option is to adjust these sliders, and the temperature slider here, adjust the warmth or cool nature of the image. And you can see as I drag it up, it's getting really orangey and warm. And if I drag it way down, it gets really blue and cool. Now I'm just gonna quick set this back to as shot, which again, resets it back to where we were. Because what I wanna do is take this, and this is a shot with the sun shining down and illuminating this dandelion. What I wanna do is warm it up a little bit because I want the whole overall image to look warmer. I want that orangey glow. So I'm gonna take it and you can see I'm going up and I'm just tweaking and this is how you approach these files. You take it and you just slide these sliders around until you like the way things look. And I'm at 8469, you see this number over here. 
I'm warmer and I like the way this looks, so I'm gonna leave it just like that. The next slider for white balance is the tint slider, which adjusts the green or magenta tint of the image. And I don't have a problem with that here. So we're going to put it back when we're done, but as I slide it, you can see how it changes the tint of the image. And you can always adjust that if you need to, but we're just gonna go back to plus 12 by clicking in here and typing 12. The next slider is the exposure, and exposure is exactly what it sounds like. You can actually adjust the exposure of the image. Now, when I shot this image, I deliberately underexposed the foreground because I had the sun in the shot, and I had this dandelion, and I wanted to maintain detail in the dandelion fluff. However, I knew that because I was shooting raw, I could come in here and I could overexpose the image to bring detail back into the foreground, into the grass and the field of dandelions. So to do that, I'm gonna take the slider and I'm gonna overexpose it. I'm gonna go up here to about plus 1.5 stops. That's a stop and a half increase in exposure. And what you'll notice is as I do that, I am blowing out and I'm losing detail in the sky and in the dandelion fluff. But I've gained color and detail in the field of dandelions in the foreground. Now this is what I love about RAW because the next slider I'm going to move to is the highlight slider. And with the highlight slider, I can actually recover all of that highlight information and detail that I blew out by overexposing the image. Do you see that? As I slide that down, it re constructs the detail and that's possible because I'm working with a raw file and because although I overexposed it by adjusting my exposure the information is still there as part of the file so with this highlight slider I can bring it back I can reconstruct it and I love that now that I've set my highlights, I'm going to adjust the contrast. The contrast slider does just what it sounds like. It increases or decreases contrast. And so I'm going to slide this up here until I get something I like the look of. About plus 15, I think. The highlights we already took care of. The highlight slider will rebuild the highlights in your image. The shadow slider does something very similar, but it does it for shadows. You can either open up the shadows. You see that I'm creating more detail in the shadow areas or you can make the shadows darker. And I wanna open up the shadows to bring even more detail into that foreground. Now the next step is the clarity slider. And again, these are things that you can just play with and mess around with to get a look in the image you want. The clarity is kind of like the contrast. However, the clarity adjusts contrasts only in the mid-tone areas of the image. So when we adjust this, it's going to appear to sharpen the image overall, but what we're really doing is adjusting contrast. And you can see that things are getting crisper, cleaner. The image looks completely different than it did. Remember, this is the image that we started with here, and this is where we are now after making these adjustments, and we're not even done yet. The vibrance is the next slider we're going to adjust, and the vibrance is similar to saturation, but I like vibrance because what it does is it looks at the actual saturation level of the colors as they exist, and it only adds saturation to colors that are not already saturated. So you can take this and you can add saturation to undersaturated colors without globally saturating the whole image. Now the saturation slider, I usually don't use because I prefer to use vibrance on the undersaturated ones. And then if I'm going to make a saturation adjustment, I come down here to this hue saturation luminosity and I adjust the saturation of any particular individual color within this range that I want. Now I don't have any saturation I want to adjust here, but I'm just gonna grab the yellow slider and crank it up just so you can see what it looks like. You can see it jumps that yellow way up. If I drag it down, it pulls that yellow out. You can adjust the individual saturation of colors in your image with this. The next thing that I'm gonna look at here is the sharpening, and this is another great tool. But when you sharpen, you see this little exclamation point here? This is telling you that you should actually be looking at this at 100% or larger when making adjustments here so that you can see what's actually happening to your image. So what we're gonna do is click on the image and you see this is defaulting to a magnifier. We're gonna zoom in so we can see the detail and adjust the sharpness. Now if you just click and drag, you can reposition the image however you want. I'm interested in the detail right in here, these little bits of fluff. 
And again, we have sliders, we just play with them. We're gonna start with the amount, and I typically take the amount up to around 50 or so. And you can see as I slide it back how things get softer, and as I slide it up how things get sharper. And you can see if we go too far, it doesn't look too good. So be careful with this. I'm gonna back it down again to about 50. The radius is how far outward this sharpening is applied, and you can go from a half a pixel all the way up to three pixels. I typically leave this about one, one and a half, but it depends on the image. And again, you just want to slide it around until you get a result that you like. And then detail, you can slide, and you see how as you increase this slider, you increase the detail areas of the image. It's trying to look and define the details and increase that sharpness. And the masking does the opposite of the detail. The masking, we're going to move this around here, looks at areas like this where there is no actual detail and tries to decrease the sharpening that was applied so you have smoother gradients and smoother edges in there. But you got to be careful because if you over mask it, then you're going to also mask the area that you're trying to sharpen. And finally, we're going to look at noise reduction. You have two types of noise in an image. You have luminance noise, which is variation in pixel brightness. And you have color noise, which is randomized color pixels showing up. And in this image, I don't have color noise, but I do have luminance noise. So I'm going to take this luminance slider and I'm going to increase it and try to reduce the noise in the image. And you see as we slide it up, it softens things up and it reduces the noise. But again, you need to be careful with this. You wanna go back and check your other area and see if you're losing detail, which we've lost a significant amount of detail there. So we need to back this down so that we can recover our detail there. So I'm actually gonna leave the luminance noise reduction fairly low because I want to maintain this detail and I'm okay with a little bit of noise in the image. And in the end, this is your final image. This, again, is what we looked like in the beginning and this is what we look like now. And this is what you can do with a raw file. It's really quite powerful. One of the most important things I want to show you is the reset button here because with this reset button, you can undo everything that you have done to an image and start over from scratch again. If I hit reset, this goes away and we're back to square zero. Now on the other hand, you can also at any time go back to any one of these adjustments that you've made and you can change it again. I could change the exposure back to zero if I want. I can change the contrast back to zero. This is applicable even after you close the program and reopen it later. One of the great things about RAW is you can always, always undo what you did. So now that we've processed this image, we need to turn it into a file. Let's say we want to take this and we want to send it to Facebook. What you do is you export the image and what that means is the program will look at the raw file and just like your camera takes the raw data and generates a JPEG file, Lightroom can do the exact same. So to, ex to export an image, let's go up to the file menu and choose export. And this is gonna give us our export menu. And here you have presets and here you have all of your exporting options. So I'm just gonna walk you through these real quick. Let's start by choosing where we're going to export and we wanna export this to the hard drive. And when you do that, it's asking you where you'd like to go, what specific folder you'd like to export to. And in my case, I've chosen the desktop. If you click the choose button over here, you can choose where it's going to go. And if you want just the images on your desktop, that's fine. If you want to put it in a subfolder on the desktop, then you can type the name of the subfolder here. I'm going to type Facebook, and then I know that this is going to be the folder that has my Facebook images in it. You can rename the file, which I typically do not do. I like to maintain the same file name. We're going to skip video because we're not working with video. And we do want a JPEG image because we're telling Lightroom to turn this into a JPEG. And because it's going to Facebook, I'm going to take the quality down to about 80 here. Leave the color space alone. And I am going to resize the image. Now, if your options are different, resize to the long edge because we just want to take the long edge and make that our size decider and change that to 1000 pixels that's the size that I like to upload to Facebook and set your resolution to 72 pixels per inch that's good for 
computer displays. After that, I like to choose to sharpen for the screen. That applies just a tiny bit of extra sharpening to crispen up the image after it's been resized. And when we've done that, we can actually save this as a preset. Now, I already have it saved, but all you need to do to save it as a preset is hit Add and type the name. I called mine 1000px JPEG. I'm going to add a 2 just to save it again. And then you can put it in a particular folder. Mine is the user presets folder. And then you hit create. And you see over here that now this new preset exists. And every time you come into this preset menu, you can click on this. And all of these settings will automatically be dialed in. You don't have to change anything. And then when you're ready to create the file, hit export. And Lightroom will do its work and it will export the file as a JPEG. Now once Lightroom has exported the file, you can go to your desktop and here it is. I've got this Facebook folder and if I go into here, I've got my JPEG image sized 1000 pixels that I can upload to Facebook. And this is us doing what the camera does without any of our input, taking control of our image and how the final image is going to look. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you this week. Now, do me a favor, please, in the comments down below, tell me how you liked this tutorial video. Do you want me to do more screencasts? Do you want to learn from me how to do Lightroom and Photoshop and Photoshop Elements and things like that? Also, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and you guys know what I'm going to say. The most important thing is that you get out there and take some damn photos. I will see you on Thursday. <sighs>